as long as we are alive and we need to eat <laughs> then there's a job for a food technologist the food sector is alive no but there's there, there's quite a lot of um job opportunities within the food industry i mean people have to be fed there's food security issues so it just depends on where you you land a job but usually people do not struggle getting jobs within the food industry <laughs>
but I do want to see people eat. In fact, when people don't eat, I get quite worried. I'm just like, why are you not eating, even though I do not eat a lot myself? You know. Hey. So I think, yeah, for people who are chefs and so on, maybe that's the case. Because with us as um, food technologists, you are not necessarily handling the end product all the time. So for example, there could be a food technologist who work in research and development, right? Where let's say they are manufacturing flavors um, as a raw material that will go into another product. So all they do as a company is manufacture flavors. Let's say for example, we want to, to have we want to have a mazimba a tomato flavor, right? So all they are doing is using their chemistry background to mix um, ingredients to say, okay, if I mix this and that, this is the flavor that I get. And their job is just to produce those flavors and then supply, let's say, someone who has a base, right? What we call a base, which is the, the potato chips. Let's say it's Simba, for example, right? Who will then take this flavor and put into the the potatoes so that it becomes an end product so do you understand that that person is a food technologist they're in the food industry but they are not really dealing with anything that they are eating because it's it's the initial stages and then some people are suppliers of just raw materials maybe before it becomes a salami stick or before it becomes whatever sausage you like it first becomes just meat and that's what they're working with so we have you did ask me you said we must talk about food technology right so we have different sectors we've got uh let's start with research and development since we're talking about that so people who actually go out there do their research right on what type of food products do people need uh, if they are supplying a a company, what type of products do their customer needs, right? So they 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 work closely with marketing people to try and identify what is it that is needed by human beings based on time. So if you look at us as uh, the the modern people of this day and age, we want everything to be instant, for example, because we want to grab things on the go and get moving with whatever we are doing. It's unlike back in the day where you had time to cook jungle oats on the stove and then sit down and eat. Most of the time now, you like instant jungle oats, add boiling water, eat on the move as you go. Sometimes you even make it a shake, right? Add more milk, make it a shake, you drink as you drive or you eat as you go to class if you are a student. So it's it's those type of things. They do their research and then they develop food products. So it could be improving on an existing food product like the jungle oats uh, example I'm making right now. You know that back in the day it used to be cooked first and then you that's how that was the way of preparing it. It it needed to be prepared on a stove top. But now I mean you can just add boiling water and then you have your end product. Right, so that's your research and um, development. That's your research and development. Or things as simple as, do you know, I'm a collision. Yeah, food when you were speaking about um, Apex, so you probably would relate to this. Remember when you were like in high school and you would buy cheese flavored knickknacks and buy beef flavored knickknacks? And sure. then take the one bag and mix everything in there. And then oh, I see. Shake, I'm a shake, shake. Yes. I see. I'm a like that. So, <laughs> and then you get companies like Sim, um, PepsiCo, which we know as Simba, right? Who would then go and make I'm a collision and mix one flavor with the other. So that's part of research and development. So they study the market, understand. What is it that people need? Oh, so people want two flavors at once. Let's give that to people. So that's how we come up with these ideas as we do our research and development as food technologists. Or there was um, 
once a product um i'm not sure if it's still there in the market i know that they developed it in i think 20 late 2021 if not 2022 like you know those cheese slices so it, it's a slice of cheese but it has polony flavor why is that because when we prepare our lunch boxes and whatever we take cheese put it in there and then put a slice of polony so it means there's a need for a consumer they like eating cheese and polony uh, with bread right so somebody in, in research and development decided okay so it means we can develop a cheese and put polony flavor because the consumers want the polony flavor to be there but also they still want their cheese and then there's also issues of money sometimes these things are not affordable but if you can make it into one uh product then it becomes cheaper and also it means even for the preparation time uh, we just have a slice of 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 cheese we don't have to be having putting the cheese slice and then going back taking the polony and slicing it and then putting it in the bread so you are also giving the consumer convenience or if you think of things like your um, instant products that we we drink all the time right where you just um add boiling water and then you are done you eat so that's part of research and development and then we have people who work in with like food regulations right so those are people you will find in government departments mostly like maybe you work for the department of agriculture land reform and rural development coming up with regulations to say these are the limits of this and that ingredients in such a food product or you even work with the department of health where you are saying no we need to be reducing salt because people uh, suffer from you know, diabetes and all um what we call high high as black people right because of sugar i mean because of the amount of salt or obesity which is a common problem right because of sugar so there's people who are there in in those departments uh, trying to come up with standards uh, for food to be safe for human consumption so that's another sector that you find food technologies in you find food technologies in quality assurance whereby now we have came up with this concept we've developed the product in the lab now we want to upscale it right and we are doing it uh, in production we have to assure the quality of this product whereby let's say if it's let's take milk for example uh, we now know that we want to develop or we want to supply low fat milk for example right there has to be somebody who assures that this milk won't make people sick right they work in quality assurance and quality control so the quality assurance people will be following the legislations um to ensure that the milk complies to the standard for example if you are saying it's full full cream milk it means it has to have two percent fat in it for us to call it full cream if you are saying it's low uh, uh, low fat it must have one percent uh, fat content in it so there's people who came up with those regulations uh, along with uh, your department of health department of trade industry and competition department of agriculture land reform and rural development those are usually the big departments that deal with your regulations of food right and then from them now we are now producing this product in our food processing plant like i said there will be people in quality control it means when the milk comes from the farm right it comes in in those tankers and when it's delivered wherever way we are processing this milk there has to be a food technologist in food quality control who checks the milk to say did they not uh, give the cow that was milk Antibi antibiotics because if the cow is sick then it's not supposed to be milked because these antibiotics can then cause other health problems within the people who will consume the milk right they will check i mean it's farming it's a business people want money did the farmer not add m water into the milk right there's things we use we check the freezing point of the milk 
will check okay farmers are smart they know that if they add water into the milk we could probably have a higher freezing point of the milk and then we'll detect that there's water in this milk so they can then think of other things like maybe if you add urine into the milk i'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying farmers add urine into milk <laughs> don't quote me incorrectly uh, but if they were to add that then the quantity increases but you wouldn't detect that via the freezing point so then there has to be other quality control measures that are there in place right to check is the milk still fresh now that's where your physics or your chemistry background will come in we think about phs now if the ph is acidic we know that the milk is not fresh it means it, it has spoiled if the milk is uh, the ph is alkaline now we know that you have added that urine i was talking about see so that's where that's why you need chemistry or as as one of the subjects that you study for food technology so we check all of those things we do your alizarol test to check uh, the ph things and then we would then do check the, the fat content of the milk so also farmers get paid based on the fat content of the milk so the richer the milk is the more expensive it is right so that's somebody in quality control but there's also somebody who works in the microbiology lab who's a food technologist right who's now checking for the presence of microorganisms in this milk is this safe for human consumption is there listeria in this milk is there uh, other yes other types of microorganisms that can be found in in the milk right so you check all of those things is the salmonella is it supposed to be there and so on and there's regulations that state that for this type of a microorganism this is the microbial load that you can have i mean for this type of a food product this is the microbial load you can have up uh, up until this limit you can have most uh that microorganism because it will cause sickness and then for some uh, pathogenic or deadly microorganisms then you know you're supposed to have zero of the presence of that um, microorganisms uh, within that food product right then you find somebody who's a food technologist who's in managing the operations of the whole processing plant who's checking everything is everything working correctly we have food process engineering where before an engineer can go and design that machine there has to be a food technologist who's influencing that who says no we need the machine to do one two three and four because of the microorganisms right to reduce microorganisms so there's a lot of sectors within the 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 food industry uh, we would have um somebody who's a food packaging technologist for example who's dealing specifically with the packaging material who's also dealing with people in the regulatory bodies who are saying maybe for example we have a regulation called r146 right which deals with packaging um or food labels right so where there's rules um there's rules in terms of what information should appear in a food label right there has to be the name of the product there has to be the name of the company there has to be the address of the manufacturer so that if there's a complaint with this product we know exactly where this was produced who to contact so all these things that you see on food labels are not there just for decoration and for fun they serve a purpose there there has to be a barcode right there has to be a batch number so that should there be a listeria outbreak or should there be a foodborne outbreak we know which batch we are recalling and we can then uh, publish on the news or in radio to say mangabu tengi rice get data so 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 and then lina this batch number or this expiry date libu isele wherever where you bought it and then we'll give you your money you know we'll give you your money back or we'll give you a voucher for those type of things ingredients list there has to be a, a food technologist like i'm saying those people who work in mostly food packaging are the people who have to ensure that all that information is there like the list of ingredients so that if you are a come from let's say a a, a religion like uh, islamity right you have to ensure that your food is halal and you can 
see that through the uh, the the halal logo and also through the 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 list of ingredients like if you you see pork there then you know you're not supposed to consume that as somebody who 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 is a muslim right or if you are a vegetarian if you see the vegetarian or veg vegan logo then you know it's good for your consumption because of uh, your beliefs as a person but if the logo is not there then you can start reading your your ingredients list and then if you note that there's an animal product there then you know you are not gonna consume that product to the list of allergens right if you are allergic to certain um things then you if it's listed like if it says cow's milk and you're allergic to milk then you are now informed not to consume that product if it says it contains peanuts or may contain traces of peanuts because of where it is produced then you also get to make an informed decision so everything that you see to the storage temperature if it says store in a cool dry place there's a reason we have done research as food technologists that tells you that you should store this product in a cool dry place because if you store it in other conditions then there's probably other things that will happen if it says keep refrigerated there's research from the research and uh, development people and then there has to be a packaging technologies that ensures that all this information appears before the product goes to you as a consumer and then of course you can also pursue academic lecturing like i did within food technology so those are the things we do. it is such a very diverse um, yeah. um industry and and you know that uh, i always say this to say you'll never go wrong with food food i mean if you want maybe something that is very sustainable long-term kind of because food will always be in need as long we'll as we are food. alive and we need to eat <laughs> then there's a job for a food technologist the food yeah. sector is alive yeah you know if you think about it. so i'm sure there are many opportunities as well um no, in terms of the, jobs there's, the, there's quite a lot of um job opportunities within the food industry i mean people have to be fed there's food security issues so it just depends on where you, you land a job but usually people do not struggle getting jobs within the food industry. There's companies that uh, produce food and like you were saying that but most of the time people go into university, get the curriculum and then they, they, they look for employment. Think about this. I mean there's a lot of things you could do. Develop your own food product for example and start selling that so that ties up into things like your entrepreneurship, right? Where you could develop mm. food product. You have the knowledge. That's the knowledge you would be using in the industry. You develop your yeah, own you food product. And I'll tell you one fun thing about um, our course here at UJ. Our students get to develop their own food products in their undergrad. So they come up with ideas to say, I want to develop this product. And then once you're done, it's your idea. You can pursue it, make money out of it because we, we train them through that. So each and every food technologist that comes from UJ has actually developed a product and they had to understand the science behind the product. So for example, with me back in 2013 when I was doing my in-service training, what I developed was a what I called custard jelly. <laughs> custard jelly influenced by uh, you know how most during Christmas they they put jelly and then also put custard so I'm like oh, people want convenient things why not have a sachet for both I mean custard is quite expensive so if I can have a, a sachet where if you just add your water and then it's like a combination of both of course it's not gonna look like there's custard on top but when you eat it you get both the jelly texture and the custard flavor so that was my product back in uh, 2013 so there's people who have um, developed uh, quite nice Leader. food products leadership can you hear me uh, leadership yeah, I, I lost you there. You, I lost you there when you said that that was a product in 2013. You can continue from there. Yeah, so that was my product in 2013. But I was also saying that there's people who have went on to develop 
quite um, nice products. So there's students who come from Limpopo who know that uh, people eat Mubani worms. They understand the nutritional mm. value of Mubani worms, right? And then instead of um, just eating it as the worm, because I mean, if you give it to someone like me who comes from KZN where we do not eat worms, I will be like, hey, hey, it's but it's got, uh, <laughs> it's got nutritional value, right? <laughs> so they then decided to do a Mubani worm stock pot. You, you see how we have those Norex, uh, Norox cubes. Oh. Maybe you don't cook. Yeah, they did something like that. So you still get the flavor, you still get the, the nutrition, and you are able to use it. Some other group did a Mopani Wem uh, powdered soup. So you don't get to see the Amazon. The yes, yeah. but you are eating it. So it's, it's, it's those things. Or people who will come up, students will come up with things like um, SEMP that is canned we all know how long it takes to cook sam right so, and sometimes you are craving for it if you can have it and it's canned convenient right so it's such such things that uh, students get to to also develop so what i was trying to say is that when it comes to job opportunities really if you are a food technologist and you're sitting at home and you're not doing anything it's because you want not to do anything, if you are being honest. There's there's a lot you could be doing. There's a lot you can do. Uh, there's a lot of products to develop. The market is there. If it's food, the market is there. Yeah, I mean, food, man, food. And the things that you're saying right now, I think, you know, one of the things that um, I think also... One of the things that I always advocate for is <clears throat> to not to to not to be narrowed into your field, because I think right now what I've realized through reading, you know, business book and looking at the trends, right now people are looking for convenience. They want something that is very convenient, on the go, touch and go. So as a food technologist, then if you then get into that space of convenience and stuff like that i think you can make a killing i'm just thinking about how can we you know you you, you spoke about um canned uh, samp um you know people love people love mohod and it takes time to cook that thing you see so if we can come up with ways to preserve cook mohod preserve it in whatever form so that it can actually last longer and stuff like that in an entrepreneurial way that can be yeah. something you know I mean, let's not even go... Sometimes it's not even about coming up with novel ideas. Think of acha. The acha that you get in your formal stores, is it nice? Like, is it as nice as the one that our mothers make wherever where they make it? So sometimes it's about also thinking about such things, formalizing them. And you make a killing. And you, know you, and you know you can go... There's a place there in Venda called Chakoma. They, they have the biggest fruits uh, mangoes and stuff like that you can go there and stock you know try in some ingredients and come up with some minenke acha yeah so mina i've got some of the sharpest students i think there is one of our students who just developed the juice concentrate she, she approached the the your butcheries the product is there wow in those so it's also about being daring and this goes across disciplines right not just for food technology students but everywhere where you are like try to see where the where there's gaps and make the most out of that gap support is there you definitely get support and i think most of the time people become so reluctant and then you'll find somebody who's not a food technologist coming up and hiring you as a food technologist to develop things for them. And it's when you don't want to think for yourself. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that, that is what happens. You know, I was telling someone, I was, I was talking to these other students the other time. These students are doing computer science. They can code. Like, those students can read the code. And I was like, you guys can come up with great things, but if you're not 
putting yourself and learning other things like business and coming up with ideas you're just going to be employed to be a coder and that's all exactly and most people fall into the trap of just being employed and <sighs> working and and that's it yeah so um let's talk about the course itself i think you've touched a lot about the careers and also what somebody with the degree can do as a food technologist in in the industry let's talk about the course um it's february right now you know the first you know students who are going to be coming probably there's going to be a first year who's going to be doing this they still don't understand what this course is about they just you know applied and they are in it and stuff like that um what can you say to somebody who asks you to say what is this course about what do you actually learn in the course okay so in the course uh okay for your first year you will learn the the basics of chemistry in food right how does chemistry affect food or how is it related to food you will do physics like i said in the long run you could probably be a food process engineer so you will do that and then you will do courses like introduction to food technology where they introduce you to um, the sectors of the food industry just give you a, a a a brief outline of where you will land up right in 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 the long run when you are now employed then we do a lot of microbiology so you will be in the micro lab. Um, those are your bases. You do need meds, so you will do meds. You will do statistics. Those are um, the courses that you more or less do as a first year student, right? And then the um, last question. What kind of people are suitable for this, being a food yeah. technologist? Um, all sorts, hey, like good, diverse, like high. So, yeah. our Makuna say we accommodate them. Like, if you are hyperactive, we want you in the food industry because then it's easy for you to interact with the factory guys, right? Because if you go to, let's say, you go to the food industry, obviously, there's these things that I was mentioning your micro labs, chemistry labs, uh, packaging, processing, and so on. But beyond that, there's somebody's father who doesn't have a qualification like you, who's like doing the, the manual work, right? Sitting sure. by the, the machine. So you need to be able to engage with such people, right? Um, to get them to do the correct things, to get them to wash their hands, for example. And there's instances where you will find Ubaba was a fake. Also, it's Mahuti. Eh, but Ben, girl, wash his hand like before eh, seven. At when can unanga? Ati, ni na twenty five. Ati, yabo na mausalo. Mi na besek seven sala already. Unga song chelu busi wash his hand. So you need people with um, good people skills who will not be angry with Bab Ben, but yeah. will probably just laugh it off and say, "Ay, but Bab Ben, we ask good man to say na la matizi zabawa biza ngabo." Salmonella, and this is Okulisa Bandiabo, as is Washa Babizan or a Baba who's gonna be saying to you, Yazinamumta Namufunde UJ. You know that UJ is so big, like it has so many campuses. And then you're like, Eh, Namifunde UJ, you're not gonna be making him feel like he's dumb. Yeah, Ungazan Chang of Tanako Funde UJ, UJ, and Gaga, Utimina Nima Zeleb. So we need people with good uh, people's skills, right, who can interact with people. But also we need people with analytical minds, right? Sure. Troubleshooting. If something is going wrong, what do you need to do? If, like we are making an example about milk, if the, the freezing point is this, what does it mean? Because there's nobody who will be standing there with notes telling you. It's no, it means they could have, you need to be thinking fast, thinking of solutions. What does it mean? Uh, if we had already pumped in the milk, how do we stop it from reaching the other stock? So, bees, you understand? So, we need people who are fast. You need to be fast paced, especially if you are in quality assurance and quality control. You have to be sharp and fast paced. We need creatives. 
I mean, if I'm talking about food, te- uh, food product development, means you should constantly be creative and also analytical, be able to study people. Even sometimes, even when people are eating next to me or when they are shopping, I'm just continuously looking at how people interact with food. You could be eating, and I could be sitting with you. I'm already thinking, oh, so. If Ben is mixing all of these things like this in his plate, what type of food product can I create that will be convenient for him? Or if he's separating the product, what kind of packaging can can I have a, a, a packaging material that will separate the rice, the beetroot, the what what what? Yeah, I understand. So we you need to be creative when you're in the industry. And then we do have our quiet people who will work in research and development you'll be fine there you're in the lab uh, probably somebody would have came up with the idea and you are just doing what you're supposed to do in the lab right so troubleshoot there's no need to be making noise um, in there we need also we need also people who will be um, working with like or dealing with customer complaints sometimes customers complain like who's gonna be able to troubleshoot what went wrong how do we speak to these uh, customers right or how do you solve the problems so those are your common types of personalities that you will get across the board quiet very loud average all sorts it's a nice industry very interesting industry to be in i like the word that you used the our machinas you know, <laughs> 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 I, uh, you know? Uh, yeah, I we can go me. on, on and on and on. But let me give you this. Thank you. I know if you could stand, you would be giving me a stand innovation. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. No, this was a nice um, chat. I do hope that it touches whoever it's supposed to touch, reaches the ears it's supposed to reach, and makes the impact uh, that it's supposed to to make. I mean, 